Oh, this is Peter by or with Fiber Design. Today we're going to talk about the Full Calc uh, FIP design program. In this case, what you see on the screen here is the uh, is the Full Calc spreadsheet. There are actually two spreadsheets. Uh, uh, these the spreadsheets I use to to uh, analyze uh, up to 40 members in a in a uh, particular uh, you know uh, of a, you know however you want to do it so it would say up to up to 40 members at a time so uh, uh, so pretty straightforward there the as I mentioned as I just mentioned there are two spreadsheets this spreadsheet is for standard profiles uh, protruded Profiles, fiberglass protruded profiles. The other spreadsheet is for angles. They're looked at differently. I'll talk about that here in a little bit as to what the differences are. Uh, uh, for the most part, what we do is we work with, Pocalc works with a FBA or finite element analysis program such as RISA. Uh, in fact, we have got a recent model up and running, so we can we can uh, compare uh, and and put in the uh, take the data out of reason and put it put it into the full cost program, so you can do a unity check on your uh, on your FRP members. In this particular case, what you see on the screen is where I've already got some members set up. Uh, uh, and uh, of this of a uh, model that has previously been so let's uh, go ahead and go to the let's first off talking about talking about uh, setting up RISA uh, in this case as you see I've got a model set up now uh, the first thing we need to do when you set up after you set your model up is uh, uh, let's Get rid of the results uh, one here, and let's go into the materials and setting up the materials. Uh, the issue here is the uh, is that we we want to set up our FRP, FRP materials, and and it's pretty easy to do. You set it up in the hot rolled section of materials. Uh, in this case, we called it FRP. So the critical items. Are, uh, are shown here in the bottom. That data is available on the Polkel sheet. If you look it down to the bottom left, you've got FRP members and properties. So go to properties. Then over here in the, in red are the figures for um, uh, for the uh, she would typically. In, uh, use in setting up an a, a FRP materials in RISA. So 2600, uh, 450, these are all in KSI and so forth, so on. So it's all very straightforward. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go back to, we'll go back to RISA. So now, one caution note here. I use 2600 in here and I recommend that you that you use uh, 2600 unless you are using a specific manufacturer and the and is going the project is going to be built with a specific manufacturer who has a different Young's modulus. And uh, what we do here, this this is a generic figure we put in here. We've looked at several. Uh, protruded manufacturers, USA, especially USA protruded manufacturers, and so this number reflects the weakest number that you're going to find for uh, for polyester uh, resin-based uh, profiles. So now, if you're using vinyl ester, it's going to be a different figure, normally higher, or if, as I mentioned, if you're using a specific manufacturer. Then you can plug that in, but uh, 2600 should be the figure that you should use. So, okay. So uh, also let's look at section sets. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we've got uh, five members here, correction, four members here that are set up for FRP. 
Uh, we're only going today. We're only going to look at the uh, columns. We're not going to bother looking at the beams. And so the columns here uh, are uh, FRP HSS HSS four by four by three eighths or four by four by six, uh, as is uh, used by by Arisa. So uh, now, if when you run your model, uh, run your model in batch. Don't run the model in envelope because you need we need to get to the detail pages for our data that we need to pull for uh, for looking at the unity of the, the unity figure for our for our FRP members. So and then uh, I typically uh, in this case this is a box structure fiberglass box structure that's going up on top of a roof of a building. It's going to house antennas. And, uh, and in this case, uh, we'll look at you. Uh, I, we, we, in this case, we're looking at it from two different, we're using wind loads and two different azimuths. And uh, so, in this case, we will we will look at that uh, in our in the pull calc spreadsheet. So, uh, setting up your uh, basic load cases is pretty much however you want to do it, and also the load combinations. In this case, we've got an area load, which you just saw, saw a, uh, a, a visual of, of that, and but also uh, ice and, and seismic is included in this too. So, so anyway, so let's go back to pull calc and let's talk about uh, getting around the pages. Let's go back to the FRP members. Now I've already put some members in here. Uh, if you don't need the uh, the other ones here, we can just we can just delete them. And uh, so now we're just dealing with that. Now, if you don't want to, you you can also choose not to display a uh, member here, and, and that's easy enough to do. So just take Control D will eliminate all that. So now you've just got a now we have kind of a clean screen of just those items here. So basically, what you do is on the the axial uh, column here. That is the actual figure we're, we're going to pull off the detail page uh, for the particular azimuth. We've chosen, as I mentioned, as we showed earlier in the, in the uh, few seconds ago, in the Risa model, uh, we're going to choose two azimuths to look at here. Uh, in this case, is the AZ000 and the AZ090. So you enter any your figure in the actual figure here, and then you enter in your your bending stress figure here, and then this 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 figure this box here gives gives you the unity check for the axial. This box here gives the unity check for the for the bending, and this figure gives you and this is the critical one. This figure gives you the figure for the total unity check. That figure must be under as in cases of all engineering, must be under 1.00. So now, why do we use POCO? The problem is, is that RISA, uh, their unity check is based on the AIS steel code. So it really does not apply. In fact, it doesn't apply at all to to uh, FRP structural members. So there you go. So you so you want to use the unity check over here in the right. So now. What happens if we make that like 70,000? Look right here on the right. You can see uh, that turned to red. The unity figure turned to red. Now it's 9.26. It's a little overstressed. So you can see here, if you do go over 1.00, uh, uh, then, uh, then the figure turns red. So uh, so and so we'll put it back. We'll put it back the way it is. So anyway, so I've already entered in the figures from the columns here. So we looked at M1 through M4. I've listed it twice so we can do the two azimuths. This is just a comfort factor of how you like to do it. Doesn't really matter. You can choose choose your uh, your uh, uh, whatever profile you want. In this case, we've got a four by four square tube uh, with three eighths thick wall. You know, if we change it to, if we change, we can change it to quarter if we want. Now, notice that the allowables just changed. 
the allowable for the, for the axials changed here, and also the allowable for the, for the, for the local buckling changed too. So, uh, so we auto, so if you, as you change the lengths and as you change the, the, uh, uh, the profile, these figures will change. For example, if we change this, you know, to, to say, say a 12, you can see how the allowables just, just went down and also the allowables for, uh, for the buckling. I think that stayed the same. They, uh, but they will they will vary, especially with large differences in lengths. Of course, these lengths here are in feet, so make sure you you note that that the lengths are in feet. When you're in Risa, you want we I like to use the length in inches, but you know whatever you're comfortable doing with so, and, we're, and working with. So that's pretty much how you work with it. Now, just to talk about a couple other things here. As I mentioned before, we have two spreadsheets, or actually a three poke programs. There's the what I call the standard POCOC program, which is primarily used for analyzing connections, but you can also analyze a, uh, a member too, a single member. Uh, uh, but it, we primarily use that for analyzing uh, uh, connections, especially connections involving FRP, uh, FRP hardware. So uh, FRP hardware has its own little particular uh, properties. So, so anyway, so over here on uh, on column K is the allowable local buckling. That's an important figure because in working with profiles, uh, uh, the local buckling figure may be lower than the allowable global buckling figure. What's the difference? Local buckling figure is the local buckling is is uh, if you take say for example a wide flange beam the local they, which would be composed of of three components two flanges and a web so with the local buckling what can tend to happen in fiberglass is that one of the flanges or the web could fail before the entire profile fails the entire profile would be the global buckling so what we do in POCALC is we look at the the local buckling first to make sure uh, that we if that figure goes below is below the global figure then then the then that then the then then the program is directed to choose the local buckling figure. So and that's pretty much how you do it. So uh, and how you work with with uh, with POCALC. Now let's go. Let's go over to uh, back to the model uh, and pick up the uh, the detail. Uh, hit the detail radio button here on the left side. This is after you after you run a batch. This is M1 here, and let's look at AZ00. And here you can see the this is the actual figure here of 728. Now it says minus. That's just the direction, so just put in put in the figure as a positive number, whether it's minus or plus. And same down here. This is the bending stress here, uh, and uh, and that's your uh, which is FC you know, here in Risa, and that's the figure you want to use also. Now this should be in PSI, not KSI, uh, because we work in the POCOC program. We work in PSI. So what you want to do is uh, you can go over to units. And, uh, and, you've, and here in stresses and change that to PSI. Now the other, I work, I like to work in length, and I like to work with length in inches, dimensions in inches, material strengths in KSI, uh, uh, densities in pounds per cubic inch, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and forces in pounds, linear forces, pounds per foot, and moments in pounds per foot. So. So as a general rule, we work in pounds and not kips as a, as a rule. So except for uh, except for uh, uh, material strengths. Okay, so that's the story on that. So so to, so basically, what you do is from the from the detail page, you uh, you pick up the uh, the data you want. Uh, for example, 090 on on uh, on M3. 
would be 726, and, and I round that out to 590. So then if you go back to, whoops, wrong one, go back to here, uh, under M3, 726 and 590, that's what I have in there. And you can see here, it hit the total uni checks here, and I chose that they passed. See, that you can you can choose pass, fail, or nothing. Like, for example, down here is nothing. Now, one thing I like to do, too, is I like to take the fill button and fill them in. And uh, I just think it makes it a little bit better for the, for the, uh, for the presentation to, uh, uh, to fill that in. So whatever you like. And then what I'll do is then I will take uh, and I will, I will then copy this uh, table and then I'll, I'll put it into my, my uh, engineering document. Uh, calcs document, however, however you like to use it. So that pretty much is, is how you use the pull calc spreadsheets. Uh, really pretty simple, uh, and uh, it it I hope I hope you like it. So down here to the bottom, we do have some instructions down at the bottom here where you can look at. Uh, uh, you can if you have any here have any questions. Of course, if you have any questions, you can email, call, text, get on the website, whatever. Uh, now we do have the website too. If you want to get onto the website, this is the this is the front page of the web, of our website, uh, Fiber Design. Uh, you can go over here and to the ProCalc and FRP management page, uh, and uh, there's a there's a Q and A here down at the bottom. And uh, again, we we, uh, we we answer I think a lot of questions down here on that. So there you go. That is the story. Thank you for watching and putting up with it. I hope I didn't push you to sleep. And uh, take care and and have a have a good day.